What's going on you guys? Theo here with the big review back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video and in today's video I am going to be bringing all of you a tips and tricks guide for trying to run solo guild raid versus the Omega Rugal boss using SS Keo. So basically I'm going to walk you guys through hard expert and lunatic difficulties and give you guys just some general good tips and tricks and advice on how to do this considering the fact that I've done this for way more time in the past few days than I would care to admit and yes my wife hates me anyway guys before we get into it make sure you smash that like button and subscribe helps me out a ton as a new youtuber thank you and let's go ahead and get into the video now the way I'm going to approach the structure of this video and you will be able to find timestamps in the description however I will say you'll want to at least listen to this part before you jump to your favorite or preferred difficulty so basically I'm going to go through and give you guys just some general overall tips with the character himself as far as his build before we get into the runs and then we'll go hard expert then lunatic and I will talk over each one of those clips and show you guys some examples of runs that I'm doing because each one of those different modes and different difficulties requires different things so it'll give me a good chance to kind of segregate all those things and be able to get give you guys proper information based on each one of those runs so that way you guys will be able to get as much information out of this as possible so let's go ahead and get into some basic information about what you'll want to do first so first and foremost this is our Keo here now I can speak from pretty extensive experience when I do say that a3 is perfectly fine in order to hit a lot of these types of numbers he is able to one key hard mode easily he is able to one key expert fairly easily and then with lunatic he is able to two key lunatic and that is a little bit more difficult so basically when it comes to the actual build let's go ahead and take a look at what we have equipped and we'll start with cards first and foremost the first thing you're going to want is the new finisher card if you do not have this new finisher card shame on you you should not even be investing in the characters if you know you can't go for the finishers but here you are you need to have this make sure that you try to get this before these cards go away if you do have a Keo and you intend on using him over the long haul because this card is phenomenal if you guys did not see my review of this character my spotlight video went up yesterday be sure to check that out link will be in the description and we uh, talked about that quite a bit and how pretty it was now as far as card sets so basically my preferred card set and the one that I use in all these runs is going to be Akane you guys are free to use whatever you want now I'm not going to talk about collaboration sets and things like that too much here because I know that people get a little touchy with that because not everybody has those so I'm just going to talk about unified sets that are on the banners that we always have and basically Akane in my opinion is the best option it is definitely going to be the one that I prefer now you're free to go with other things that we'll talk about momentarily here but the reason I like this one is that 30% chance to deal the extra damage equal to 150% of attack upon landing an active skill and being that Keo has a very nice attack stat it ends up adding up to quite a bit of damage now when it comes to the other sets like I said you can go ahead and use a Leah set if you are a dirty person that wants all of your friends to hate you and disown you but basically you can use Leah Leah is pretty decent overall although I will say that he doesn't necessarily need all the resets he already has plenty of them and I would prefer to have the extra overall damage output so that's what I think of Leah however very very good and then finally the other set that I would recommend here where is it yep, there we go so the city of darkness set if you have it very very good some sort of visual glitch going on down here I don't know if you guys see that but that's interesting anyway basically I use this card set probably second most to Akane and this one is almost able to keep up with Akane but it still does tend to lag a little bit behind but your mileage may vary it is a very very good set you can even use the Gears of Fate set which is the newest best set that is currently available in the SS banners it's up to you guys either way the devs got lazy both these card sets are the same in pretty much most anything outside of PvP so that is the card sets that I would recommend now when it comes to options I use the Gintama option because yes I'm a bad person and I use collaboration cards however you do not need it the only reason I use it is for the extra critical rate you can use any cooldown reduction card that you want and it really doesn't matter I prefer this one here personally I like this card a lot I use this card a ton and being that it gives the extra power charge honestly 
when we talk about stones. There's other ways to get extra power charge for this character that he doesn't really need. This is really all he needs to be able to successfully get off as many of these different finishers as possible. So that's pretty much where that's at. So you guys do what you want to do. If you are on a budget, using Maxima cooldown reduction cards is always a perfectly fine option. This is a perfectly fine thing to do. So if you don't have any of these other kind of rare cooldown reduction cards, you can do that. So really does not matter. Cooldown reduction is really all you need. You can do whatever you want with these and you will be fine. So that is going to be my recommendation on option cards. Pretty simple. I would just say use cooldown reduction. As far as stones, when it comes to the stones, I am just using a full set of the Volume 2 SS stones. You guys can mix and match if you have the original SS characters. Sorry, trigger warning. I know a lot of people are upset about that, but cover your ears, whatever. But when it comes to the new SS characters, they are also compatible with the old SS stones. So you can mix and match those if you want. I have tried the Circle Stone from the original SS banner on my Kyo before, which is going to be this one, I believe, right here. Yes, this one here gives the extra power charge rate, so they need to put a space right there between buy and 15%, but what do I know? You can use that one, it's pretty good, but honestly, I have, uh, I've preferred this one here, just because it is given the extra blast skill damage, and basically with that being said, that S1 being his only blast skill, you would think it doesn't make a huge difference, however being that he can fire it off so often, you know, on an awakening rotation he can fire it off 13 or 14 extra times, or whatever the case may be, it, it makes a big difference. So, in my opinion, I was getting better numbers with this, but you can do what you want to do if you have the option of doing so. That is pretty much what we need to know about this you know as far as the build goes not a whole lot else we need to talk about there i think that that pretty much brings us to the next topic which is going to be strikers the general overall striker that i tend to use and i kind of go back and forth um basically i use iori that is going to be the main striker that i use so not athena but iori and obviously the reason i use him is for the core effect for those of you who are not aware of what the core effect is that Kyo uses with Iori. Basically, you'll see it right there. It is going to increase his active skill damage by 20% when Iori is in the team. If you guys are not aware, to my knowledge, both the Unshackled Instinct Iori and the Orochi Iori do not count towards this. However, the gold and silver border Ioris do. So if you are on a budget or you didn't get lucky enough to get both characters and you just have Kyo, go ahead and use those Ioris, but do not use the other Fess ones. They will not count. So that's pretty much what I do for hard mode is I use this Iori. There's going to be different strikers depending on the difficulty that we're going to talk about when we get to those respective clips. Now in these clips, I believe in this hard mode run, I was using Athena, and if you guys do not have Iori and you want to use Athena instead, basically go right ahead. I was using Iori on the actual team in this run that you're about to see, and the reason why I will sometimes use her is she does give some extra power charge here. You'll see that she gives an extra 7%, whereas Iori does not give that. Now, Iori does have better overall effects for Kyo, I feel, and you definitely need him on the team somewhere, and if you did not see my video yesterday, he does count if he's a striker towards the core effect. So again, that's why we use him quite often there. But at the same time, I, I, I'm back and forth on these. It really depends. Um, Honestly, I've had just as good a luck with either of these characters, so it really doesn't matter. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this Ness Kyo unless you just don't have any of these other two characters, mainly because this one isn't really built best for Guild Raid, but that's up to what you got available to you at the end of the day. So that's pretty much what we need to know about this. I'm going to go ahead and go into this hard mode run, and I'm going to give you guys kind of some general overall observations and tips throughout these clips, and they're all going to be kind of sequestered and pertaining to just those specific difficulties, because each one of these difficulties requires some different things that you need to do in order to be able to properly sustain him and get him through, particularly when you get to Lunatic. But let's go ahead and get into the hard mode run, and I will walk you guys through it. All right, you guys, so we have our Kyo, we have our Iori on the team, and then we have our Athena on Striker. Those are the only three that matter for this run. So for, to start out here, you're basically going to want to try to get off your 
core finisher as soon as possible. That way you can try to take out about 50% of that shield in one fell swoop. By the time you do that, you should only have a few seconds left on your awakening rotation before it's off cooldown, and then you can go ahead and break that shield and start spamming those skills as much as possible. After that, it really just comes down to rinse and repeating. You want to try and get off that core finisher a second time to do as much damage to the shield as possible, run through a few skills, get your PG back up to a point where you can use your 3 PG card finisher, and then basically just start buying yourself as much time as you can until your next awakening rotation. And that's kind of the name of the game here with the solos. You're basically just trying to stall the clock as much as possible whenever you do not have your awakening rotation, and you're going to just try to use your card finisher in order to do that. So really when it comes to the difference in damage on the shield between the two finishers, I've clocked the core finisher, and keep in mind guys you need to be very up close and personal with Rugal in order to make sure that you are getting as much damage on that core finisher as possible. If you did not see my video from yesterday I showed you guys the mechanics behind this but there are what I call spark hits when it comes to that core finisher on its startup and those do a decent amount of damage that you do not get if you are at a mid range so you have to be pretty much right on top of Rugal and like I said when it comes to the core finisher I've clocked it at about 50% of the shield as far as the damage that it does and then this finisher here is going to do about 40% so while 10% isn't a major major difference it does make a big difference over the course of a fight so my opinion on this is you really just want to use your core finisher as much as possible against this boss because it's just going to be better overall for the shield shred and that's kind of where that's at. Now, for those of you who are completely new to Guild Raid, really you want to be using your Awakening Rotation with the shield down as much as possible. So basically, try to time it, and there's not always going to be... Sometimes you're going to have instances where you're going to have to hit your Awakening Rotation early, but basically you want to try and time it to where you are starting up your Awakening Rotation right as the shield is about to drop, or when the shield has just dropped. So basically, you just want to time it as quickly as possible around those two time frames because you want to try and do as much damage as you can. Now, as you can see right here, this is an instance where I did not do that. And the reason being is if it's going to come down to you just sitting on your awakening rotation with none of your finishers off cooldown and none of your skills off cooldown, then you're better off just hitting it and trying to spam that shield down as quick as possible. Don't worry about it if that happens. As you'll see with this clip, it did not hurt my my damage overall in any way shape or form and the reason being is I was able to time it to where I was able to spam several of my skills and then hit my core finisher get that nice 50% shield drop and be able to drop that shield quick and still do oh, quite a bit of damage even if I had to hit my awakening rotation early and again by early I mean when the shield had just refreshed or was about to refresh so like I said, typically you don't want to spam your awakening until the shield is almost down, but every now and again you're going to have instances where it's just unavoidable, and that's okay. Just try to only do it when you absolutely have to and don't make a habit of it. Now, something that should go without saying here, but is another rule of thumb that is going to apply across all of these difficulties that we're about to be doing, you want to make sure that you only use your core finisher when you have the proper dot applied to the boss, because if you do not and you do it when he doesn't have the dot applied, you're not going to do anywhere near the amount of damage necessary in order to take the shield down reliably. So again, make sure that you have have whatever dot it is you need whether it is going to be your burn your darkness or your starlight which in the case of the starlight is nicely associated with that core finisher so you don't even need to worry about it with lunatic but with the other two difficulties you need to make sure that you apply that dot before you fire off that finisher otherwise you're basically just wasting it and that is pretty much all there is to know as far as just general overall good practices that you're going to be using across all three of these runs we're going to get into the specific details and specific strategies for the actual difficulties here momentarily when we get into Expert and then especially in Lunatic, but I wanted to go ahead and use Hard Mode as a way to set up just general practices here because this does tend to be one that is just more spam heavy and there's less moving parts, but that is going to be the Hard Mode run, guys. As you can see, we did 816 million damage on a solo run using Keo. Very, very good stuff. Let's move on to Expert. 
All right, you guys, so in expert difficulty, the biggest thing that you need to know is you need to make sure that you have a striker with Keo that is going to have darkness because Keo has no source of darkness on his kit whatsoever, which makes this, of these three modes, the toughest one for him, in my opinion, even with lunatic difficulty and the damage issues that he might take when it comes to that, which we'll get to. But basically, with your striker, you need to have either Lady Geese, Psyche, or Halloween Chris. My opinion on this is I always have preferred Lady Geese in this scenario, but you work with what you got. Basically, any one of those three characters is usable. However, there are going to be differences there that you'll want to know about. For instance, Halloween Chris is a little bit wonky when it comes to his striker ability, so Lady Geese tends to be a little bit more consistent. And then Psyche, same, di same issues. So basically, Lady Geese, in my opinion, is going to be the best of the three for this. And really what you need to make sure that you're aware of is that whenever you drop her in, you need to be certain that that Rugal is not going to be in the middle of an animation that might cause her to miss because if she does miss then basically that is going to ruin your run because then you're going to be sitting around waiting for her to come off of cooldown and it's going to make a huge difference at the end of the run as to whether or not you'll be able to one key this because the one key scenario with this pretty much lives and breathes off of whether or not you are timing her correctly or whatever striker it is that you're using for your darkness in this particular mode. Now, some other things to know, basically, when it comes to this run, just follow the rules of thumb that we already talked about in hard mode. There's really not a whole lot you need to change from that. The strategy remains the same, but the biggest thing that you need to keep in mind is you kind of want to make sure that you're timing your lady geese whenever the shield is up. Do not drop her in when the shield is down. That would waste her, and then again, you're going to be waiting for her to come off cooldown. So don't make that mistake. Try to make sure that you only time her when the shield is up, and you should be in pretty good shape. Otherwise, what you're going to do from there is you're just going to try and waste time with your 3PG finisher. So make sure that you guys are trying to spam your skills as much as possible. Use the striker whenever the shield is up to apply the darkness, and then go ham with your skills. And that's basically all you need to know about this. I also do try to time my Lady Geese around when I have my core finisher up as you just saw there. The unfortunate part of that timing was right as I went to use it, he did do his tummy ache maneuver, which tends to be kind of OP sometimes because basically he is going to dodge out of a bunch of damage whenever he does that, as you saw with this clip. But basically here, that is going to be what you need to know. Now the other thing to keep in mind, being that you do need the Lady Geese Striker here, you're not going to be able to do much as far as keeping Keo alive. You can use something like a Healing Stone or something along those lines if you really want to. But as you can see here, we're already at the one key, so we don't have to worry about it. Our Keo can go down and it's no big deal. However, with the difference in damage our Keo is taking, you are going to notice that this is going to become a theme going into the Lunatic tick difficulty but that is expert guys pretty easy as long as you have the right striker now let's go ahead and move on to lunatic because there's quite a bit to talk about here quite a bit so first things first the biggest difference we are using a healing striker in this instance we are using athena however you guys can use whatever healing striker you want i prefer this particular athena because she tends to have more heals than most of your healing strikers are going to have so I do enjoy using her here, but basically the same general rules apply except for the way we are going to approach certain things in this regard. So this is where you're going to have to start getting into advanced things. Basically, you're going to want to use your Athena when you're about to use your finishers and only when you need the heals. The reason why you want to drop her when you're about to use her your finishers is because basically you're going to buy yourself a ton of time in order to, as you can see there, you see my heals popping up behind me you want to try and time it that way so that you don't have any chance of taking additional hits while you're waiting for those heals that way you can get as much out of those as possible they add up quite a bit by the end of these fights and you really do need them you also are going to be leaning on your core finisher even more here than you were before because your core finisher is going to be your source of starlight and it's your only source of starlight which is really where the difficulty comes in here besides the damage. Now right there is something I want you guys to pay attention to. Basically, as you saw, right before he went for the nuke, I rolled, and as you'll notice, I took the stun, but I took no damage. Now that is necessary here. Basically, that is an exploit that you guys are going to want to practice
practice. It is a muscle memory thing that I cannot necessarily teach you very well. It is something that you're going to need to just learn over time. But basically there's two ways to go about this. You can either do a roll or you, if you have your finisher off cooldown, either one of them, you can go ahead and hit your finisher split second right as he goes for that stun. So basically right as he goes to turn the lights out and stun you, if you hit your finisher or you roll right at the perfect time, you'll basically always take the stun, but you will not take the damage. And that is how I am able to get some extra sustain in this mode, because trust me, if you do not take advantage of that exploit, you are probably not going to to live through this fight unless you are perfect with your timing on your dodges and your Athena heals. But with the Athena heals, like I said, just make sure that you're timing her when you need her the most. Do not use her when you know you've only got a little bit of chip damage and there again I didn't take any damage from that nuke as you saw because I did the roll trick. Again, pay attention to that, rewind this back, pay attention to the timing, try to copy it because this is something that is not just useful for Keo in solo opportunities. This is something that is extremely beneficial for any team to know how to do this. So make sure that you guys try to learn that as best you can. I've heard that on Android it's quite a bit easier and reliable, more so than iOS, which is kind of funny considering iOS is typically the one that tends to get all the nice things. So again, right there, I didn't take any damage. I did my roll right at the perfect time. I'm starting to get pretty good with that. So Overall, guys, that's pretty much what you're looking at. The biggest thing to keep in mind, again, is that exploit and Athena. Make sure with Athena that you're timing her when you need her. Try to time her around when you're going to have at least your 3PG finisher like this one here, because if you time it around this one, by the time this finishes up, you'll have already gotten most of your heals, which is really, really good. And then you can just kind of go back into your awakening spam or your skill spam or whatever it is that you're doing in the moment. But as you'll see here in these scenarios, basically the name of the game is you want to try and go for the two key scenario. Don't worry about one keying. It's impossible with Keo on a solo basis. You're not going to be able to do that. However, the most amount of damage that I've been able to eke out here, again, I did not take any damage there, um, but basically the most amount of damage I've been able to eke out in Lunatic has been about 498 or so million damage. That is about the most I've been able to do here with him solo, but even then that is still a really good amount for this character. So keep that in mind, that's really all you need for the two key scenario. In fact, you could do a fair bit less than that and still be able to two key this. So yeah guys, overall that is pretty much what you need to know about how to do this. Hopefully you guys found it informative and let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'll see you on the other side. Well, there you have it, you guys. Those are going to be your tips and tricks in order to get through these solo runs that much easier and that much quicker. Like I said, there's quite a few things to know depending on the difficulty that you are going up against. But basically, at the end of the day, Keo is a phenomenal solo artist for Guild Raid. I do not think in any way, shape, or form he is as good or as dependable as Chrysalid, because as we've established with Chrysalid, he is going to be just far less squishy. He's going to have a lot more more sustain. He doesn't have to rely on gimmicks such as strikers and so on and so forth in Expert and Lunatic. And with Expert and Lunatic, he is specifically designed to tear those to shreds. Now, even though Keo does have Starlight on his finisher, he is less than ideal in a Lunatic scenario, and he's definitely not ideal when it comes to Expert. However, it is possible to do this, and if people are wondering why you would want to do this, basically it is just for quick, easy clears. That is the reason why typically you would want to go for solo characters, because not everybody, believe it or not, goes for trophy runs where they're hitting, you know, 900 billion damage or whatever the case may be. That tends to be more so for us YouTubers who just want to kind of show you guys something fun and interesting to look at. So really for people who are just in any general walk of life, who are just playing this game normally without having those sorts of things that they have on their mind that they're trying to consider, really you just want to go for the quickest, cleanest characters that you can for these scenarios. And in this regard, Keo is the absolute tops for hard difficulty. But like I said, 
chrysalid's going to treat you better when it comes to lunatic and expert but then again keo is no slouch as you've seen and can get the job done in this capacity for all the people in my discord that have been asking for tips on this who had been asking for tricks on this had been asking how i'm able to hit the numbers i hit those are the ways that i found to hit those numbers so you guys can let me know in the comment section down below if you have a keo that is awakening level three or four Heck, even if he's lower, let me know how you're able to do in these guild raid runs, how much numbers you're able to put up. But basically, the idea behind this was to help you guys be able to do this just that much easier. And I hope you found it informative. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe. And I will see you guys in tomorrow's Saturday chat and chill. You guys take care. Peace. Continue.